Well, anyway, we got to talk about these two shows, and uh, we don't normally do this, but we're going to start by talking about the main event of Hell in a Cell. Oh, that's the story. Instead of going from the beginning to the end, we'll we'll start at the end, and then we'll go from the beginning to the end till we get to the end. Holy fucking shit! This match. Yep. Oh my unreal. god, yeah, this was unreal. So this this poor Cody uh, tore his pec, obviously. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because you know I was tweeting about this bruise and everything, and you know these nerds on Twitter, these fucking dorks. Mm-hmm. Some were like, "Oh, look at that makeup." Oh my god. And I was like, "How much makeup do you have to put on your body to create swelling?" His yes. this side of his body, yeah. uh, was like you know he was half his father. Inflate. Yeah. <laughs> It was, he was, it was just, like, out to here. I did wonder if this is some kind of a subconscious tribute to the splotch. So he's all, he's just absolutely, it's just absolutely brutal. It's no, and, no, uh, no, no good. And the first, uh, the first question that everybody had was, who in the fuck let this guy go out there yeah. and do a match? Uh-huh. 100%. And uh, listen, I don't know. I'm a doctor. But I do know this. They have doctors. And a doctor had to have allowed him to go out and do this match. What does that mean? I don't know. But, you know, as a non-medical professional, my presumption is that when you tear your pec off the bone, you can't tear it anymore off the bone. That's what You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like all the way off. So uh, presumably they just figured, brother, if you can stand the pain... I mean, you, you can't tear it more off the bone. Right. It's torn. I, I presume that's what happened. Again, I don't know, but uh, re- real- the reality is in WWE, if if he was in danger of doing you know, like significantly more damage, I don't think there's any chance they would have let him go down there to the ring. But he did go down to the, the ring. And uh, for the, about the first two minutes, I mean, he really couldn't do anything. And I thought, man, this is going to be a struggle. And I, I hope they wrap it up quick because he can only use one arm. Yeah. And uh, and they kept going and they kept going. And it was a combination of you knew how much this had to hurt poor Cody. Mm-hmm. And also, holy shit, did they have a good match. Oh, my God, it was awesome. Yeah. So when you when you add the the greatness of the match... To, as we mentioned a million times, everybody knows that this is not real. But anytime you can do anything that is real, the fans are, are all the more captivated. And, you know, one of the, the best examples, which seems out of the blue, but since people have been talking about the pipe bomb so much, that, uh, that CM Punk match with Ryback, which was obviously not real. But what was real was Ryback had never lost. CM Punk was on a long streak as champion, and they were inside the cell. And it doesn't matter what happened. You knew that one real thing was not going to be there anymore. Either a real streak was going to be gone, or you were going to have a title change. So you were going to see something no matter what, and it was one of the best buy rates they did during that era, because something real was going to happen in that match. And uh, the reality of the injury added to how great the match was, man, this thing, I was just, my mind was blown. This match was so awesome. Cody won, Mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, I figured he had to win the third match. But once he tore his pec, you know, he's going to be out anywhere from, I don't know. If you're John Cena, it'd be three months. If you're anybody else, it could be nine. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's going to be out a while. And so... You know, does he need to beat Seth Rollins if he has an injury going in that everybody knows about and he's going to be gone for months and months and months? Of course not. Seth can win that match. But they decided that uh, he's their guy. He is number two behind Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he won with a sledgehammer shot. And, man, this was over. And, like, this had to hurt like a motherfucker. Oh, my God. But, bro, if you're talking about being Cody Rhodes and thinking – what can I do for my legacy? What can I do that people are never going to forget and that's going to get me over literally for the rest of yes. my entire career? Mm-hmm. And uh, and he did it here tonight. And when this was over, he came off as like 
a fucking baby face for the ages, this Cody Rhodes. And uh, it's funny because, like, you know, he got booed a lot at the end in in uh, in AEW. And I'm sure, you know, you know the fans are. All of these WWE fans are different. They, they could still turn on this guy. But, uh, you know, if you talk to, to people that know Cody, you know, most everybody likes Cody. But even the people that like him are like, you know, he's a, he's a worker. He's, you know, he's a Rhodes. But at the end of the day, whatever you want to say about Cody, I don't, I will not stand for anybody ever in the history of ever try to tell me that he doesn't care about wrestling or he doesn't care about the fans. 100%. I mean, fuck. He did not need to go out for this match. Most people wouldn't have. But he went out there who would, yes. and and obviously, I mean, don't think that he didn't also realize that, you know, this is for my legacy and, and this is going to get me over and everything like that. But man, fuck me. This guy, you know, he if, if ever there was a time where a man should get a, like a thank you, Cody chant. Yeah. I mean, this was the time because he didn't need to do this. And he did. And uh, it was fucking amazing. It was amazing. I, I don't know if I don't know if he'll ever hear this or if somebody knows him, but Mr. Rhodes, you are the man. I have nothing but respect and admiration for you. Um, I also think you're a little crazy, but that's no, he's definitely crazy. But, I don't uh, think that he would deny that. <laughs> he's but, out of his gourd. I think he'd be the first person to tell you that. <laughs> this this was one of those matches that um, is is a legacy match. It's. Oh my gosh, it was so great. And anybody saying that this was a makeup job, you've never actually had a bruise in your life. Makeup jobs smear after you're sweating for a half hour plus. And they're not shiny and bulbous. <laughs> and and, and, you're, oh and he gosh. was swollen. He was inflated. It's all true. I want to say uh, one other thing here real quick before we, we talk more about Cody. And I want to put over Seth Rollins as well. Because yeah, we've been, we've been yep, talking yep, yep. about Cody the entire time. But yep. uh I never had an injury as bad as Cody, okay? But no. But I once separated my shoulder, and it was bad. Okay. And uh, I had a match that I was scheduled to wrestle the next night, which was not in front of 15,000 people. It was in front of about 250 in fucking Cloverdale, okay? So I also did not need to do this match, all right? But I decided I was going to do it. And uh, I decided I was going to do it because you know who I was in the ring with? Buddy, Buddy Wayne. And Richie Magnet, okay? And I knew that I would be totally fine. And you know what? I was. Mm -hmm. So uh, Cody, it was injured, and uh, you have to have absolute trust in your opponent to go in there in the shape that Cody was in. And, uh, and he had that with Seth Rollins, and fucking Seth Rollins did a phenomenal job in that match, holding up his end. Because he was the one that had to do practically everything. I'm not saying Cody didn't do anything, because Cody did way more than I expected him to do. But Seth had to go in there basically with a guy with one arm, except he actually had another arm, and he had to work over that arm without actually hurting that arm and peck. And he did a fantastic job. And uh, people did mention that there was a... Uh, um, Thank you, Cody chant, and they couldn't figure, or thank you, Seth chant during the match, and they couldn't figure out why. He got the table. It was the table, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you guys remember, there was a uh, uh, hardcore match with Happy Corbin mm -hmm. and Madcap Moss, we'll and that. these fans really fucking wanted tables. But they were going to do a table spot in the main event, so they didn't get to use tables. Mm -hmm. And so whoever would have gotten that table was yes. going to get that chant. And for whatever reason, they decided to let the heel get the table, and so Seth did in fact I get... I don't know if Cody could have gotten a table. Oh, he could have pulled it out with his other hand. But the point of, the, the point of it is, th I think that's why they were chanting, thank you, Cody, because they'd been waiting three fucking hours for a table, yes. and the guy finally brought it out. But There was questions about this? It was obvious to me. Well, I don't know. Some people were wondering. Okay. But anyway, he deserved a thank you, Seth chant... For not killing Cody Rhodes and uh, and being one half of this fantastic match, so both these guys deserve all of the all of the credit I could possibly give two people tonight. Here, here. When this thing was done, I just kind of sat there in a daze for about two minutes, and uh, I was trying to think of the last time I had a feeling like that after a wrestling match, where I just thought to myself, "I've never seen anything like that before." And it occurred to me the last time was Cody versus Dustin. <laughs> so mm. this 
this Cody Rhodes fella, his best matches are really like the best matches. There's no doubt about that. But so yeah, uh, get the show, everyone. It's a thumbs up. No matter what else we talk about or what else we say, uh, the main event. The more I think about it, the more I think it's probably going to be the match. It could be a match of the year. And sure. and I also absolutely loved the opener, yep. which I guess we can start with now. I want to say one last thing about that match, okay? And please, I'm not reporting this. I always have to say that. I'm not reporting this, okay? Because I only heard it from one person, all right? So I don't know if it's true, but whether it's true or not, I got a point here. So I was told near the end of the match, I hope they don't open the door because they had something stupid planned, okay? Oh, my gosh. So listen, I don't know if it's true or not, all right? But here's the point. They didn't do it. They did not open the door, and they didn't do something stupid. And this match was fucking awesome. They're... So my overall point is, you, in fact, don't have to do something stupid off the cell to have a great no. Hell in a Cell match. No. No. You can, in fact, be in the cell with the fucking door closed the entire time, with nobody running in and nobody getting out, and having a fucking all-timer. There was a point after Cody hit I think it was his second crossroads yep. where he paused, yep. and I was like, oh, my gosh, he's it's, going to go for at, the moonsault. At the very end, he hit the two crossroads and briefly looked at the sky, oh. and I thought to myself, don't you dare. <laughs> and he Thank turned God around he and didn't. grabbed the hammer and won with that instead. You good? You good over there, Barry? Yeah, I'm good. I yelled okay. so loud I had a coughing fit. <laughs> Sangha versus Lee stands on Lee's chest when she's down. Bangs her, uh, her on the apron, pull, um, puts elbow on her chin, threw her out of the ring. You know, it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022, Granny, but uh, no. Lee, in fact, identifies as a man. <laughs> Legend time, versus woman. Perez. That was another NXT. Can you believe the little guy beat him? He beat Legend. A that. little guy? Now yeah. Roxanne Perez is a man? Yeah. Roxanne. <laughs> no. no, these were two women. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Granny. you got to be kidding me today. God. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.